The definition of big cats varies between organizations. Typically, the big cats refer to the five species from the genus Panthera. This includes the tiger, lion, jaguar, leopard, and snow leopard. Some also include cheetahs and mountain lions as big cats. There are three wildcat species found in Europe today. They are the European wildcat, which is an ancestor of domestic cats. The Eurasian lynx is found in North, Central, and Eastern Europe. And the Iberian lynx is found in Southwest Europe on the Iberian Peninsula between Spain and Portugal. The Scottish wildcat is a variation of the European wildcat. Lynx and wildcats are not considered big cats, but did big cats once roam Europe? And if so, what happened to them? In the past, there were several big cats that called Europe their home. These were mostly during the Pliocene, Pleistocene, and early Holocene epochs. Most recently, the Caspian tiger lived in patchy distribution across Asia and into Eastern Europe. It is thought that some tigers survived in Turkey until as late as the 1990s. The Caspian tiger was hunted to extinction by humans. Their prey, mainly wild pigs, was also overhunted by people. The tigers themselves were killed for sport, and with massive increases in agricultural land, their population declined due to habitat loss. It is disputed whether they were actually in Europe, though, as the majority of turkeys lies within Asia. If we look further back in time, however, into Europe's ancient history, there were plenty of big cats roaming the countryside. During the Pleistocene, the European jaguar, cave lion, giant cheetah, Eurasian puma, and saber-toothed cats lived on the continent. In order to understand why there are now no big cats in Europe, we can find out what happened to the ones that were once there. Firstly, the European jaguar. This big cat is the earliest known species from the Panthera genus to have lived in Europe. It appeared in Eurasia not earlier than 2 million years ago. It was common in southern and western Europe and later entered North America via Beringia. Until the Middle Pleistocene, these jaguars were the only big cats in Europe. They were larger than today's jaguars and about the size of a small lion. This species was able to hunt a wide prey spectrum and take on larger animals than today's jaguars. They were well adapted to the changing environmental conditions of the Pleistocene. They seemed to cope during the repeated glacial interglacial cycles. They became extinct between 350 and 300,000 years ago. The reason for its demise in Europe was the arrival of the Pleistocene cave lion. The extinction of the European jaguar was a gradual process. As the density and abundance of the cave lion increased, the jaguar retreated into smaller and smaller pockets of Europe. Their populations became more isolated, and they were eventually overwhelmed by the number of the cave lion. Secondly, the European cave lion. These lions were a subspecies of modern-day lions. They originated from Panthera leofossilis, and their fossils date back to the Pleistocene and even into the early Holocene. These lions originated in Africa and dispersed into Europe during the Middle and Late Pleistocene. They crossed into North America via the Bering Land Bridge and traveled as far south as Peru. Unlike today's African and Asian lions, these Ice Age lions were maneless. It is thought that these lions did not actually live in caves as their name suggests. The caves would have been home to cave bears, which used them to hibernate in and shelter with their cubs. The lions were more suited to coniferous forests and grasslands. They were about 10% larger than today's African lions and would have hunted medium and large herbivores such as deer, bison, and young mammoths. It is thought that the reduction in the amount of prey available may have led to their extinction. Scientists believe the cave lion became extinct from Europe at the end of the Pleistocene or early Holocene. Thirdly, the giant cheetah. Although today's cheetahs are almost exclusively found in African grasslands, they used to live in open forests across Eurasia. The giant European cheetah was morphologically like modern-day cheetahs, but weighed considerably more. This could have been a response to the colder climate. They still had slender bodies and long legs. They were built for speed and probably hunted prey in a similar way to cheetahs today. The giant cheetah was around in the late Pliocene, through the Pleistocene, and even into the early Holocene. The exact cause of their extinction is unknown. 
they may have been outcompeted by other big cats and carnivores, as well as struggled to adapt to a changing climate. Fourthly, the Eurasian puma. The Pliocene Pleistocene puma also lived in Europe. It is thought to have been of a similar size to American mountain lions. Fossils from this species, puma pardoids, have been found throughout Europe. The terrain and land cover of these areas were diverse during the last ice age. This suggests that this puma occupied a range of habitats from forests to grasslands. These pumas were present in Europe from the Pleo-Pleistocene transition and lived for more than 2 million years. The high ecology adaptability of this species allowed this cat to find its place in the complex web of the early Pleistocene carnivores. The arrival of the equally adaptable leopard is thought to have outcompeted the Eurasian puma by the end of the early Pleistocene. Finally, the saber-toothed cat. These cats also lived in Europe and were also known as homotherium or scimitar-toothed cat. They weighed up to 420 pounds and were a similar size to African lions. They lived in Europe until 28,000 years ago. It is likely their extinction was also part of the mass extinction of megafauna during the Ice Age. Woolly mammoths, giant cave bears, and saber-toothed cats became extinct towards the end of the last Ice Age. It is thought that this mass extinction was due to a mix of both environmental changes and competition with the early man who was spreading throughout Europe and the Americas during this time. It is also thought that Homotherium's low genetic diversity led to the cat's demise. If a species has lower variability in its genes, that makes it more vulnerable to environmental change. As a species, it is less able to overcome significant changes to its environment and habitat. Many animals that roamed the globe during the Pleistocene have since become extinct or had their ranges severely restricted. Mass migrations within the Pleistocene epoch were partly due to climate change. Some African species dispersed northwards when forests gave way to savanna and arid conditions reduced prey availability for some of the top predators. In North America, the extinction of a large number of apex predators and their prey happened at the Pleistocene-Holocene boundary. It is not certain why these animals became extinct, but it is thought that early human settlers were not entirely, if at all, to blame. In Europe, it seems that a mixture of changing climate and interspecies competition led to the demise of Europe's big cats. The puma, together with the giant cheetah, was one of the top predators in Europe. Later on, the pantherine cats joined these predators, dominating Europe's ecosystems for hundreds of thousands of years. Some of these big cats became extinct when lions and leopards spread widely into Europe. The end of the last ice age dramatically altered Europe's landscape. It has often been assumed that southern Europe provided pockets of refugia where some species, including early man, survived the harshest of the glacial periods. As the Earth moved into the Holocene, global temperatures warmed, and those in southern Europe were able to move northwards into the unpopulated territory. Of course, populations had traveled northwards before, during the Pleistocene, but the Holocene migrations were more permanent when the climate became warmer. Paleontologists don't yet have all the answers, but with each new fossil discovered, another piece of the puzzle is completed. Although changing climates and environmental conditions that caused mass extinctions were a natural occurrence, maybe we could learn a thing or two from the not-so-distant past. That's all for today! If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time. time, time.